Hello, today I wanted to chat about early Russian VFD tubes and the likes. I did a video a couple of years ago when I got hold of this Electronica 7. I took it apart. It's an old clock and if you are from Russia or Ukraine or somewhere like that, you probably recognise this clock, especially with the uh, front on. This hasn't got the front on it because obviously there'll be a cover over this, obviously, because you don't want to... Even though these, uh, they're on about 30 volts, so it's, it's, it's all right. These are VFD tubes. The one in here specifically are IV20. Uh, IV26s come in multiple types and I can't remember exactly which type this one is but the reason I know these come in multiple types is because I ordered some to replace them because as you can see these ones are a little worn out and ended up getting the wrong type. Each type of these has a different amount of pixels per output. There are some with less outputs for instance uh, these two get tied together and then the three get tied together into a pin and then the other two get tied to together for a pin and I think actually these are that one so they don't actually have have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They don't actually have seven separate pixels in each of these tubes. Uh, the first two in each of the tube are ganged together, and then the next three are ganged together, and then the last two are ganged together. And that's because I guess the seven segment display numbers, uh, well, you don't need more complexity than that. So there is purpose built tubes for this purpose. However, the IV26s are also found in smaller clocks and I guess they need more pixel resolution and as the type goes up I think the more pixels are available on pins. This one right here is a Type 2 and as you can see there's only actually three wires that go out and connect to, one of them connects to these, the other one connects to that and the other one connects to that and if you look you can sort of, if you focus on it, you can sort of make out how that's working there. This one's a Type 3 and as you can see there are actually five kind of tracks going down the tube, going to different pixels. It still hasn't got every single one as separate pixels, but it's got a lot more resolution. My introduction into these Russian kind of vacuum tube VFDs uh, was about 10 years ago or so when I found out about the IV12 uh, clocks that you could get. For instance, this is one that I put together last week on a Patreon Builders live stream. I didn't build it as a DIY project. I actually found quite cheaply on the internet a 30 pound PCB that already had all the surface mount components on it. It's, uh, it shares a lot in common with the Open VFD project that looks remarkably the same, and I wouldn't actually be surprised if it is exactly the same. It's, it's down to, it uses the same shift registers and transistor drivers as it, so I'm guessing maybe this might just be a clone of it, but it's remarkably cheap, and if you're interested in looking at either the Open VFD or the actual project that's inside of this, then the links are below. As you can see, I might have soldered this one a little bit wonky. This clock in particular uses the the IV11 tube and that's the one right here. As you can see it is a seven segment display with a little dot on the side and you know loads of legs. I like these tubes quite a lot and I have quite a lot of them. Initially I was going to build the Google counter with them but I'm, for, for one reason or another I ended up not doing it. So I have a number of these and I've got another project that I'm planning to do uh, rather soon that's involving a whole load of these and a whole load of relays so keep your eye out for that. So they require 1.65 volts and then also they require uh, 30 volts and the 30 volts goes straight straight to one of the pins that correlates to one of the uh, little uh, segments in the seven segment. The cathode at the front, you put that to ground and then boom, you have light. And then you can use them however you like. This one's a dismantled one from a broken one. And as you can see, it has the grid removed from the front. And you can see how the fluorescent segments are laid out. And on the back, you can see the correlating wires connected to them on the back. Obviously, this is inside a vacuum tube usually. Also, if you look carefully, you might just be able to make out the broken heater wires on the front dangling. <laughs> but my introduction to these VFD clocks was about eight years ago when I made a stripboard version of it for my parents for Christmas. And lo and behold, it's actually still holding up. This one is called the IV12. I've got to say I like this one more than the IV11 purely because it has the same pinout as a 12AX7. So you can use a normal style valve plug to actually put these in and that's what I actually did on my parents uh, clock when I made it back then. I used these and I basically put some valve sockets onto an enclosure so these popped in. The only downside to that is if one of them is a little bit loose the whole thing doesn't actually work. <laughs> if you look on the internet you'll see there is a lot of new old stock of all of these types of tubes and there's a load of other different types of tubes as well. You could get much smaller versions versions of these and they are a lot cheaper. The IV6 and then the IV3 is even smaller and then you can get ones with more segments in them. For instance the IV4. There's one with more segments right here for instance acting as the designator between the hours and the minutes. You can also get a 
number of seven segments within a circular tube, like the IV27, for instance, then you can also get more traditional shaped VFD tubes that are also in this category. They all run on the same voltages. And like I said, even projects like this, which are surprisingly cheap, you can still pick them up. So there are links below if you're interested. And if not, go on the hunt and have a look for yourself. In other news, this rather curious thing turn up. I'm not quite sure what it is. It says armature and firing angle. It's got a bunch of extra voltages going into it. It might be for fireworks or maybe I'm just being a little bit naive. It could be for rocket launches. All I know is it looks absolutely incredible. So if anybody's got an idea before I do a video on it, then, you know, it's anybody's guess. <laughs> Anyway, I've been Sam. This is the Museum of Everything Else. If you want to support these videos, go and check them out on Patreon. There's loads of extra content. And yeah, I'm just going to get back to getting this all ready to be opening, which will be very soon. Anyway, take care. Don't forget to subscribe. Toodly-doo.